Operation Searchlight was a planned military operation carried out by the Pakistan Army to Kirk the Bengali nationalist movement in the erstwhile East Pakistan in March 1971, ordered by the central government in West Pakistan. This was seen as the sequel to Operation Blitz, which had been launched in November 1970. The original plan envisioned taking control of the major cities on March 26, and then eliminating all opposition, political or military. Within one month, President Yahya Khan at a conference in February 1971 said, Kill three million of them and the rest will eat out of our hands, prolonged Bengali. Resistance was not anticipated by the Pakistani military leaders. The main phase of Operation Searchlight ended with the fall of the last major town in Bengali hands in mid-May. The operation also precipitated the 1971 Bangladesh genocide and caused roughly 10 million refugees to flee to India as well as the death of 58,000 to 3 million civilians. Bengali intelligentsia, academics and Hindus were targeted for the harshest treatment, with significant indiscriminate killing taking place. These systematic killings enraged the Bengalis, who declared independence from Pakistan, to establish the new state of Bangladesh. The violence resulting from Operation Searchlight led to the War of Liberation by the Mukti Baini against Pakistani occupation forces in Bangladesh. Following the ill-fated Operation Chengiz Khan, Indian intervention resulted in the Pakistani Army's unconditional surrender to the Joint Command of the Indian Army and Mukti Baini on December 16, 1971. Background after the Awami League had won a decisive majority in the 1970 Pakistan parliamentary elections, the Bengali population expected a swift transfer of power to the Awami League based on the six-point program. On February 28, 1971, Yahya Khan, the president of Pakistan, under the pressure of PPP of Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto, postponed the National Assembly meeting scheduled for March. The Pakistan People's Party had already started lobbying to weaken the stand of Sheikh Mujib, and Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto was heard saying that he wanted the Bengalis to stay away. The Awami League, in response to the postponement, launched a program of non-cooperation which was so successful that the authority of the Pakistan government became limited to the cantonments and government institutions in East Pakistan. Clashes between civilians and the Pakistani army, and between Bengali and Bihari communities erupted and became commonplace. President Yahya Khan flew to Dhaka to hold talks with Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, leader of the Awami League, in March, and was later joined by Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto, then the leader of Pakistan People's Party, which had secured the second-largest share of seats in the elections. Unwilling to transfer power to East Pakistan as demanded by Awami League, or to lose face by backing down in face of the non-cooperation movement, the Pakistani generals, most of which including Gul Hassan Khan supported the Pakistan People's Party, finally decided on a military crackdown. Prior to the launch of the operation, a final meeting was held in GHQ. Martial Law Administrator of East Pakistan and Unified Commander of Pakistan's Eastern Military High Command Vice Admiral Saeed Mohammad Hassan, objected to the pre-planned operation. Air Commodore Mitty Masood also objected to the operation, fearing that violence would provoke East Pakistan into more violence. However, under pressure during the meeting from Pakistan's Army and Air Forces General, General Yahya Khan gave orders to his Army and Air Force commanders to launch the operation. Disheartened and isolated, Admiral Hassan resigned, in protest, from his position as Martial Law Administrator, Unified Commander of Eastern Military High Command, and the Navy. With operation came in effect, Air Commodore Mitty Masood II resigned from the Air Force and as Commander of Eastern Air Force Command, the operational plan, 
The planning process The plan was drawn up in March 1971 by Major General Kadam Hussain Raja, GOC 14th Division, and Major General Ralph Arman Ali. As a follow-up of decisions taken at a meeting of the Pakistani Army staff on the 22nd of February, the 16th Infantry Division from Quetta and the 9th Division from Karian, West Pakistan, were ordered to prepare to move to East Pakistan in mid-February also as a result of that meeting. Before putting the plan into action, senior Pakistani officers in East Pakistan who were unwilling to support the military attack on civilians, LT, LT, Gen. Tikka Khan became the governor and GOC of East Pakistan. On March 17, General Raja was given authority to plan the operation via telephone by General Hamid Khaz, Pakistan Army. On the morning of March 18, General Raja and Major General Ralph Arman Ali wrote the plan at the GOC's office at Dhaka Cantonment. The plan was written on a light blue office pad with a lead pencil by General Farman containing 16 paragraphs spread over five pages. General Farman defined the operational premises and conditions for success, while General Kadam Raja dealt with the distribution of forces and tasks assigned to the individual brigades and other units. It assumed that the Bengali army and other military units would revolt at the onset of operations and the planners suggested that all Bengali units under arms should be disarmed prior to commencing the operation, and the political leadership arrested during a planned meeting with the president, General Yahya Khan. No operational reserves were earmarked. The handwritten plan was reviewed with General Hamid and L.T. General Tikka Khan on 20 March at the Flagstaff House. General Hamid objected to the immediate disarming of regular army Bengali units, but approved the disarming of the EPR, armed police and other paramilitary formations. Yahya Khan refused to sanction the arrest of Awami League leaders during a meeting with him, as the plan had proposed. The amended plan was approved and distributed to various area commanders. The operation was to start on the night of March 25, 1971 in Dhaka, and other garrisons were to be alerted via phone about the zero hour to start their activities. General Farman Ali commanded the forces in Dhaka, while the rest of the province was commanded by General Kadam. Lt. General Tikka Khan and his staff were present in the 31st Field Command Center to supervise and support the command staff of the 14th Division. The initial plan to arrest by a company of No. 3 SSG, lead by Major Zed A. Khan was scheduled at 0100 on 26 March night. Major components of the plan Operational premises as outlined by the Pakistani planners the operation aimed to eliminate the Awami League apparatus and any civilians and personnel of the armed forces supporting the Awami League movement. In defiance of martial law, cunning, surprise, deception and speed was emphasized as crucial for success. Use of free and greater force was authorized. Search and assault of civilian areas and Hindu areas also were authorized. Requirements for success Requirements for success Operation to be launched simultaneously all across East Pakistan. Maximum number of political and student leaders, and those among cultural organizations and teaching staff to be arrested. Operation must achieve 100% success in Dhaka. Dhaka University would be occupied and searched. Free and greater use of fire authorized for securing cantonments. All internal and international communications to be cut off, including telephone, television, radio and telegraph. All East Pakistani troops to be neutralized by seizing weapons and ammunition. To deceive the Awami League, President Yahya Khan to pretend to continue dialogue, even if Mr. Bhutto disagrees, and to agree to Awami League demands. The designated centers of offensive operations under that plan were Dhaka, Kulna, Chittagong, Kamila, Jessa, Raj Shahi, Rangpa, Saidpur and Silhat, areas where West Pakistani army units were concentrated. 
Pakistani army units and paramilitary elements in other areas of East Pakistan were to maintain control of their respective areas and await reinforcements during the initial phase of the operation. Once Dhaka had been secured, the 9th and 16th divisions from Pakistan were to be airlifted into East Pakistan as reinforcements. Cities with airfields would be reinforced via C-130 airplanes or Helleborn troops directly from Dhaka, although the plan did not specify the time needed to subdue East Pakistan. It was assumed that after the arrest of the political leadership and disarming of the Bengali military and paramilitary units, civilians could be terrorized into submitting to martial law within a week. Lt. Gen. Tikka Khan estimated that no resistance would remain after April 10. Composition of Pakistan Armed Forces in East Pakistan The 14th Infantry Division was the only Pakistan Army Division stationed in East Pakistan in March 1971. This division had four infantry brigades attached to it, instead of the normally allotted three brigades. The 57th Infantry Brigade was headquartered in Dhaka, the 53rd was in Kamila, the 23rd in Rangpur and the 107th was in Jessa. Brig. M.H. Mozumdar, a Bengali, was in command of the Chittagong area. Normally, each brigade contained three or four infantry battalions and a field artillery regiment and various support elements. These four brigades had 12 infantry battalions containing purely West Pakistani personnel before March 25, 1971. This division also had five field artillery regiments, a light anti-aircraft regiment, a commando battalion, all of which contained a majority of Pakistani personnel in various East Pakistani bases. The only armoured regiment in East Pakistan, the 29th Cavalry in Rangpur, was a mixed unit. 20% of the East Pakistan Rifles personnel were also from West Pakistan, while the support elements of the various units and cantonments were mostly of mixed nationality. Most of the individual unit commanders and majority of the officers were from West Pakistan. West Pakistani Army personnel were also posted at Station HQ, Dhaka, Pakistan Ordnance Factory, Ghazipur, Central Ordnance Depot, Dhaka, Ammunition Depot, Rajendrapur, Embarkation Unit, Chittagong and with some field intelligence units. The Pakistan Air Force had 20 F-86 Sabre jets and three T-33 trainers at the Dhaka Air Base. The whole squadron was transferred to Dhaka after March 25, 1971. C-130 Hercules planes were transferred to Dhaka for the operation from West Pakistan. Airfields were located in Chittagong, Kamila, Lamanirhut near Rangpa, in Salutikor near Silhut, in Jessar and near Takuagaon. Rear Admiral Muhammad Sharif was given the command of Eastern Naval Command of Pakistan Navy. The Pakistan Navy had four gunboats, a patrol boat and the destroyer PNS Jahangir in East Pakistan. PNS Baba, flagship of the Pakistan Navy, would visit East Pakistan after the operation started. Major naval bases were located in Dhaka, Chittagong and Mongla. Pakistan Army Bengali units in East Pakistan Six regular Army Bengali infantry regiments were present in East Pakistan in March 1971. The 1st East Bengal Regiment was in Jessa, attached to the 107th Brigade. The 2nd EBR was in Joydevpur north of Dhaka, attached to the 57th Brigade. The 3rd EBR was in Saipur with the 23rd Brigade, and the 4th EBR was in Kamila with the 53rd Brigade. The 8th EBR was preparing to ship to West Pakistan and was at 75% strength in Chittagong. The East Bengal Regimental Centre in Chittagong housed 2,000 Bengali troops including the newly raised 9th EBR. The 10th EBR, a training unit, was in the Dhaka cantonment attached to the 14th Division. Bengali officers commanded the 1st, 2nd and the 10th EBR, while the rest were under Pakistani officers. Other Bengali forces East Pakistan Police, 
almost exclusively Bengali, had 33,995 members of all ranks. 23,606 members were armed while the rest had firearms training. Several thousand Ansar and Mujahid members, trained to fire, 303 rifles, were scattered around the province. The East Pakistan Rifles, a 15,000-strong paramilitary force, was divided into 17 operational wings in seven sectors and was deployed around the country. The EPR companies were often divided into sections and platoons and deployed in camps near the border or in border outposts. Unlike regular army units, EPR companies were commanded by JCO, NCOs, and EPR wings contained only light anti-tank weapons and a mortar platoon with six mortars as artillery. EPR headquarters and 2,500 EPR troops were posted in Dhaka. The majority of the EPR officers were from West Pakistan, serving on deputation from the regular army for two to three years. Pre-operational steps implementation The planners needed to ensure that all Pakistani unit commanders became aware of their role prior to commencing operation, which had to be done while maintaining complete secrecy. The concentration of forces and allocation of supplies as well as arrival of reinforcements from West Pakistan and briefing of area commanders had to be carried without raising suspicion. On 24 and 25 March, a group of Pakistani generals, accompanied by General Hamid, General Mitha, the Quartermaster General, and Col. Saudullah, Principal Staff Officer, visited major garrisons via helicopter and personally briefed garrison commanders and senior West Pakistani officers on the operation. Operation. General Farman was sent to Jessa. General Kadam himself briefed the Camilla and Chittagong garrison commanders while Brig. El Edris and Carl Sardula visited Rangpa. Secrecy had been strictly maintained, only a few LT. Colonels learned about the plan beforehand on a need-to-know basis. Although some Bengali officers had become suspicious of the all-West Pakistani officer briefings, no one outside the briefings learned the details beforehand. Managing Logistics Marj, Gen. Kumar Ali Mirza and Brig. Harrison arrived from West Pakistan during the second week of March to arrange the logistical details, mainly because the non-cooperation program was hampering food supply to the cantonments. The main ammunition depots were located in Rajendrapur near Dhaka and 9,000 tons of arms and ammunition were in Chittagong abroad MV SWAT. So it was decided to speed up to the unloading of the ship. Pakistani troops started arriving in Dhaka via pier flights carrying special passengers. In addition to the 13 FF and 22 Balak which had already arrived, Pakistanis planned to send a brigade to East Pakistan to enhance the chance of success prior to March 25, and the new arrivals were part of that processes. Pakistan Army Eastern Command also had to make arrangements to house and feed these additional arrivals, a fact that was noted by Bengali officers in the Army Supply Units. But ultimately nothing threatening to the plan came of this. Brig. Harrison stayed behind in Dhaka to coordinate the logistical effort after Gen. Mirza left for West Pakistan to arrange matters there. Shuffling of armed forces personnel The army also took steps to enhance their chances of success by relocating Bengali officers away from sensitive areas and bringing Pakistani troops to the cities. The departure of two Pakistani army units, the 25th Punjab and the 20th Balak was delayed, while the 13th Frontier Force and the 22nd Balak regiments were flown to Dhaka from West Pakistan before March 25. To maintain secrecy, no major reinforcements were initially sent to the other garrisons in East Pakistan before March 25. Brig. Mozumdar, who had refused to fire on Bengal civilians blocking the unloading of MV SWAT was relieved of his post on 24 March by Gen. Kadam himself on the pretext that he was needed to address two EBR at Joy Devpur and Brig. M.H. Ansari took command of Chittagong area. Marj. 
Khalid Musharraf, Brigade Major of the 57th Brigade in Dhaka, was sent to 4th EBR in Camilla as 2IC on March 22. Lt. Khal Masood al Hassan was relieved of his post on March 23, and Lt. Khal Quasi AFMA Raqib took over on March 25. Pakistanis refrained from mass transfer of Bengali officers, as that might have compromised security of the plan. Bengali officers were urged to take leave, while West Pakistani officers were told to stay put. Families of West Pakistani officers and soldiers were evacuated from East Pakistan, and when possible families of some West Pakistani civilians were brought into the cities. Dispersion of Bengali units before March 25 denied permission by General Hamid to disarm the regular Bengali army units en masse before the crackdown. The Pakistani command employed other ploys to minimize the threat of these formations. Bengali units were sent out of the cantonments, or were broken into smaller units and deployed away from each other, and cut off from the main radio and wireless communication grid before or on 25 March. Bengali officers were sent on leave, or were posted away from command centers or units directly involved in the operation. In some cases, West Pakistani officers took command of Bengali formations. Some Bengali soldiers were sent on leave, and some were disarmed on various pretexts whenever possible without raising alarm. The first EBR was sent out of Jessa Cantonment to Chalgachar near the border for winter training, where they stayed until March 29. Companies of the second EBR were dispersed around areas outside Dhaka and their radio communication net was shut off. The third EBR had its companies dispersed around Goragat and at Parvati Pur outside the Sidepur Cantonment. The 4th EBI units were deployed between Brahman Barrier and Shamshurnagar. Only in Chittagong did the regular army Bengali units remain in their respective bases. West Pakistani EPR troops were posted in the cities whenever possible, while Bengali EPR troops were sent to the border outposts. Most EPI units were away from the main action areas, and would need at least a day to reach the major cities. The EPR wireless net was shut off on the night of March 24 or 25.